Hello guys and welcome to the first episode in a series of tutorials on RimWorld. The first thing you want to do when you start the game, you will be presented with this screen. We have to create new world, so you click uh, create new world and you can type your seed in here. You can either reset it and have a different random seed or you can type what I do and you will get exactly the same seed as me, so Phoenix Tutorial. Phoenix Tutorial, if you type that, you will end up with a word that looks exactly the same as mine. So generate the word and ask the map how it looks. I will talk about different biomes soon. At the moment, let's save and finish and let's start a new colony. All you have to do is click New Colony and you are presented with different difficulty levels and different storytellers. Storytellers decide how the difficulty level will play up. Cassandra Classic is kind of normal difficulty level really. It goes like that. Starts very easy and kind of gets progressively more difficult the stronger you are. And if you take some beating it will loosen up on you and will become a little bit easier. Fibichi Lens is kind of very slow learning curve. It goes very 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 slowly like that and slowly increases with your wealth but not as steeply as Cassandra Classic. And Randy Random is basically random. He can throw at you excellent event, he can give you plenty of gold, some colonists and god knows what. And or he can attack you on day one with the massive mechanoid raids that will completely ruin you and destroy you. So to start to learn the game I think the best one for you is Cassandra Classic. Now you can choose the difficulty level of it even more. So free to play is basically very easy. Base builder it will still follow the curve the same way as I described, so it will go like that and more difficult and more difficult. But it will be less steep curve, so it will go something like that. Roof will go something like that and challenge like that and so on. So the best place to start really is roof for a new player, so you can start challenge and extreme, but if you are basically new to the game I suggest strongly starting with roof. Click next and now you end up to select the world that you're going to play on. And that's the one you created just a second ago. Now you're presented with this map. On this map you can select different biome to start with. You have ice sheets where it's basically super cold. If the temperatures are going up to minus 52 Celsius, which is way below freezing for those of you that no, don't work in Celsius. Then you have tundra, which is a little bit warmer and it has actually some hot temperatures in the summer. Desert. And desert doesn't necessarily have to be hot, as you can see this one is particularly cold, but it's dry, so there is no vegetation there, it's very difficult land to play. Airshrubs is similar to desert but a little hotter. And tropical biome, and then finally you end up with temperate forest. Temperate forest is really good starting biome for any new player because you, can, you get to learn everything new about it. When you scroll with your wheel, you can get closer so you can select the locations. And I suggest starting somewhere, somewhere like that. It's going to be minus 8 or something like that. Minus 10 in the summer. So now minus 10 in the winter and plus 20 in the summer. Quite nice. Very typical kind of European weather. So if you select this location, your coordinate should be 32.53 and 43.73. You will end up with exactly the same map as me if you type the seed I suggested for you. So select that, click select site. Sorry, let's go back. So select that. You have advanced options in here. You can choose the bigger map and choose a different starting month. On the beginning, you shouldn't worry about that. The starting month will start you on the beginning of the spring, which is the best time to start in any biome pretty much. So select the site and now you end up with being able to pick up your freak starting colonies. They go with the backstory in here, you can read that, what they were doing, so like calling scrubs, pulling cards and digging holes in the medieval world, because they come from different periods. As you can see, this guy is almost 2000 years old. So he was born years, years ago. And uh, they come from different time periods and from different planets as well, different planets kind of developed at different rate. Then his adult life and what he's incapable of. So he cannot do a doom labor, which means he cannot move items and he cannot like kind of tag along things. So if you have guy like that, dump him. You don't want him. 
you don't want him to start with. Later on you can afford that, but at the moment on the starting guy you don't really want him to be not able to do a doom labor. Then you have a trait. As you can see, Kalfur Shooter reduces aiming time by 25% and shooting accuracy plus 50%. Uh, so he will aim for longer and he will be more, more likely to hit the target. He's also a slow poke, so he moves a little bit slower than normal character. And he's neur neurotic, so he works faster, but he will break up faster as well. And then you can get to look, look at his skills, and that's the skills for you. So shooting is responsible for any range attacks. Melee, obviously for any melee attack, so is that unarmed and any other melee weapons you can get. Social is responsible for your trading skills and for recruiting new characters to your base. Medicine obviously is medicine, so you will patch wounds, perform operations and everything like that is covered by medicine. Cooking determines how well you will cook, so the higher the cooking the better quality meals you can cook and also the le lesser chances of giving p your people food poisoning. Then you go constructing, that determines how quickly your guys will erect new buildings. Growing determines how quickly they will grow new plants. It's not actually growing plants, it's planting them, because you have to plant the seeds, and that determines how quickly he can plant a row of seeds. So you have 10, the guy with 20 growing will go super quick, and the guy with 5 will go very slowly. But the plants will grow at the same rate, so it doesn't accelerate the, gro the growth, just the planting process. Which takes quite a while, so it's worth having. Mining determines how quickly they will mine through the mountains and collect materials for you. And artistic determines how good quality artistic objects they will produce. Because you guys can make quality of artistic objects like uh, sculptures. And them sculptures will increase uh, happiness of your colony, wealth of your colony, and you can sell them for money. So the higher it is, the better quality sculpture you can make. And the faster you can make it. Crafting is very similar to artistic, but it produces the useful items like weapons, uh, bricks and other items like that. And that determines the quality of them. And also the speed. And finally, research determines how quickly you will discover new technology. You have to perform research in this game to kind of learn new technologies and upgrade your base. So the research will determine how quickly you can do it. And then you have different guys in here, so you can do that. And you get to randomize it. So if you click randomize, you cho choose different skills for them. So let me just go for few, and I will come back to you very shortly. Okay, so I randomized few characters. They have also the age, so the older they are, the more likely they are to fall to the diseases. So my team is actually quite old, but that's okay. I can start with that and we still should be fine. So my character is in here, uh, and well, the skills I, I always aim to cover is cooking, it's very important, so I have one really good cook in here. And medicine is kind of important because I will cure guys. You want, also want at least one character who can do research and somebody who can do growing. So that's the main skills you have to cover in your first starting group, then you can expand. Luckily in here I pretty much managed to cover everything. So my guys should do quite okay for themselves, and also they have not bad trait. Cold Tolerant and Psychically Dual are good traits to have. Trigger Happy, Slow Poke and Hit Tolerant, not the best, but not too tragic either. And this guy is opposing to alcohol, so he will not drink that much. He's Iron Wield, which is one of the best traits to have, he will pretty much never break. And he's a pessimist. He has a permanent mood minus 6, but it doesn't matter because his iron wheel will stop him from breaking. All you have to do now is click start and you will go to the new screen. Okay, so you end up with this new map in here. The three of you are awakening the cryosleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later you are on this unknown rim world. As the pieces of shredded starship fall around you, you start making plan plans to survive. Click OK. Just wait for you guys to land with all the equipment around them and immediately press space. That will pause the game. And then on the next episode, I will teach you how to choose the good starting location for you guys and basically how to move on from that. 
So you should end up with a very similar location. You may end up somewhere here or here. So it doesn't matter that much. As long as you pick the same location, you will end up on the same map somewhere. So your location will not matter that much. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something useful today. And if you do, please like, like this episode, please share it if you like, and please do subscribe to the channel to stay tuned with the other episodes that will come daily on the channel about the remote tutorials and teach you how to play it. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.